Hi, I'm Bryce. And I'm Christy. And we are from Millennial Revolution. I'm JL Collins. And this is Alan and Katie Donegan. <laughs> <laughs> change your life? It was a question I had struggled with, tossed and turned over as I entered 2018. I had discovered financial independence. I knew that I had enough money, but I was lacking courage. I didn't have the strength to walk away from a profession that seemed to encompass my identity and yet brought me little joy. I lacked the mental fortitude. I was stuck. In what turned out to be an incredible stroke of good fortune, I signed up for a weekend getaway, a financial conference where I figured a bunch of money geeks like me could nerd out over spreadsheets and life hacks. Although I certainly found that, I also met a group of nurturing and empathic people who shared some of my most basic worries and concerns and who helped me develop the courage to do one of my most difficult life tasks, extract myself from medicine. Community can be transformative, but for me, it couldn't just be online. I had to go to another place, surround myself with people just as motivated, and change my life. Today, I'm proud to bring you the architects of another such community who created Chautauqua, a week-long retreat with talks about financial independence, early retirement, and happiness. Jail Collins of The Simple Path to Wealth, Bryce and Christy from Millennial Revolution, and Alan and Katie Donegan, welcome to Earn and Invest. Katie, I want to start with you. Your first experience with Chautauqua was as a participant. How did it change your life? Oh, that's a juicy one. Um, Alan and I went to Chautauqua as attendees back in 2016. What I got, which I wasn't expecting, was the community that you just talked about, Doc G, is the people that you get to meet and the like-minded people. And like you said, you share the same sorts of struggles and concerns, like how do I live a happy life? That's the question that we're all trying to answer. I found people that were searching for that as well and had managed to step out of the nine to five race and able to buy back that time to start thinking about that. And it was the community that I brought away from it, which is what I was not expecting. And our lives were never the same again. Tell me more about that. What do you mean your life was never the same again? We saw a different world that was possible. And I think it's it's one thing reading about financial independence. And then when you meet someone who's actually done it and you go, oh, they live a completely different life and they give you confidence to do different things. Like the confidence levels within ourselves to do different things, to live in a different way, the opportunities from talking to people, our life was never the same again because of the belief in the possibility and the confidence that it gave us to execute and do things differently because this is not normal. What we talk about on the Uninvest podcast, what we talk about in life, becoming financial independent, it's not normal. JL, one of the first things you notice about this conference is the name. Tell me about how you came up with that name and why is it apt for this kind of conference? Chautauqua is an um, old Native American word, and it means basically a gathering of people to come together to tell stories and, and share ideas. And when I was first thinking about creating an event where we could bring people who are interested in financial independence together in some cool place for cool conversations, that word, which I would stumbled on years earlier, just seemed like the perfect description of what was in my mind. And so Chautauqua was the, was the name that I came up with. A lot of people are unfamiliar with the word. And that, from a marketing point of view, is probably a drawback. But I guess I like the word well enough that, that we went with it. And, of course, now, whether people recognize the origins of the word or not, when you say Chautauqua in the FI community, people know that you're talking about the event that we put on. Bryce and Christy, as Jill says, the name Chautauqua has become almost a brand unto itself. Describe the average participant who comes to a Chautauqua. Is there a stereotypical type of person who participates? We have like, people of all different backgrounds, people um, from different types of careers. And um, to speak to the power of the community in Chautauqua, we are actually recording live uh, right now with a, um, we're actually staying in an Airbnb in um Portugal with five other Chautauquans that we met at in Greece. 
not only do you get to meet people at Chautauqua, you actually re- remain lifelong friends with many of them. And they've actually become our family. So uh, just being opening up your mind to all different t- people that are from many different backgrounds and careers, like that's not something that we had the opportunity to do when we were working because it was basically like we're engineers. All the people that we hung out with were then engineers. We didn't really meet anybody like we, now we hang out with artists and entrepreneurs, like just it really opens up your mind and your world to different types of ideas, as well as that that really close knit community. Yeah. In terms of the demographics, when we were doing uh, when we do the blog, most of the traffic that comes into the blog are people who are just starting out or they just learned about this, uh, about this fire stuff through either SEO, or they Googled it, it was referred to by a friend and they're just they want to learn there. It's kind of in, uh, they're, they're learning the ropes. The people that go to Chautauqua are generally not like showing up and going, so what's this FI stuff about? Right. Because in order to get there, they would have had to, you know, book flights and spend money and, and, and all those kinds of things that don't really make a lot of sense for people who are just starting off. So, uh, the people, while it is quite diverse in terms of the experience and their, uh, where they are in their FI journey, it does bias a little bit more towards people who are more established. They are from all sorts of different walks of life, but they are more like kind of on the cusp of achieving FI and then trying to figure out what it is that they're going to do after FI. That was a that was a recurring theme for many of the Chautauquas that we did, not all of them, but that was a recurring theme that I noticed that people were coming up to Chautauqua for two, for, you know, there's a couple of reasons. One, to meet famous people and us for some reason. <laughs> Two, to have people look at what they're doing. They want a second pair of eyes on what, on, on what their numbers are. And three, to look for inspiration to what life is like after, you know, you are exiting the rat race. Because most people spend the vast majority of their time just paddling towards FI. And not a lot of them spend a lot of time thinking, what do I do on the day plus one? From the very first Chautauqua, and to be honest, when I was putting the very first Chautauqua together, I never gave too much thought to who would come. I was hoping that we we set a limit of of thirty people, and I was hoping, obviously, we'd fill the, fill the seats. But I never really given and gave any thought to the kinds of people who would come. And what was most stunning to me from the very first Chautauqua, and has been true of every single Chautauqua, is the incredible diversity of people who who have found their way to it from from the very beginning. And when I say diversity. I mean, in every possible way you can think of of human diversity. Uh, We've had people financially who are at the very beginning of their journey. We have had people who are incredibly wealthy. And as Bryce said, there are a lot of people in the middle who are are on the verge of, of declaring that they're financially independent. We've had certainly racial diversity. We've had great diversity in terms of age. We've had diversity in terms of sexual orientation, in terms of religious beliefs. Almost any way you can measure human diversity has been represented in Chautauqua. As I say, that was something I never gave any thought to, candidly, and was one of the more gratifying surprises, and it continues to to this day. Do you think financial independence is a topic that kind of cuts across all political spectrums and all the different, like, the different... uh, like axes of diversity, where it's just like, if you like money, you know, you're then, then, then they come. Yeah, I, I absolutely do. I think, I, I think money is the great equalizer, right? Money, yeah. money doesn't care who you are. It doesn't care where you came from. Doesn't care what you look like, what your gender is, what your racial background is. You know, if it's the beautiful thing about investing in VTSAX, which is my favorite, is no matter who you are, you will get exactly the same result as anybody else. It's uh, uh, th- there's a great quote. I can't think of who who uh, of it exactly, and so I won't try to try to state it or even who made it. But something to the effect of money is the most universal and fair measure that humans have created. It just it just goes across all spectrums of of humanity equally. I feel like there's enough difference that makes it really interesting for the people that come. Like you said, the differences in age and background and career and country and where they've lived and what they've done. But we all have this core similarity 
we have the same values. We're thinking about how to live a happy life. We're thinking about how to make a positive difference in the world. Yes. And it's amazing. All these people from different backgrounds, the way that we gel together at Chautauqua and the week runs from Saturday to Saturday. I would say by the Tuesday or Wednesday, like we are a family. We are one. We're laughing and joking together. Yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful experience. And that's happened every single time that we've done it. And it's that's the magic of Chautauqua, that it brings all these very different people together. Yeah, the commitment to pursue uh, financial freedom and, and the opportunities that creates for you and the people around you and and uh, that facilitates uh, creating a happy life. And that's universal across across humanity. Katie, how much of the conversation is actually about finances? I mean, I, I've heard us talk about finances, but we've also talked about diversity and there's been a lot of talk about kind of living the life you want to live. How much of your time do we actually spend there talking about money? Very little. <laughs> I mean, people come, so everyone that comes to Chautauqua gets a one-on-one -on -one with one of the speakers and I'm sure there's money and, you know, talked about there, obviously well, very we confidential. We us being us, Alan made a PowerPoint presentation to show to uh, JL and say, what do you think about this? This is where our money is. This is what we're doing. I want the Godfather stamp of approval on our numbers. <laughs> it's basically what I wanted. <laughs> so there's that. To be clear, and this is when you you were attendees at your doctor. Yes, yes. Before you, this is when before you wound up running the, running the thing for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, there is there is a bit of finances and am I on the right track and is this am I doing the right thing am I actually FI and didn't realize we have people that realize that they're FI during the event which is magical yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah. the vast majority is more happiness and life and almost philosophical like how do we live a happy life and just connecting on all sorts of different levels with the other attendees so travel is something that everyone tends to have in common I mean we're traveling to Colombia you've got to like travel to come to Chautauqua and that's something that is common throughout everyone that comes people often want to talk about how do I talk about this with my loved ones with my family with my friends I feel isolated because no one else is living their life the same way that I want to live my life and I'm losing my friends or I don't know how to relate to people um, and often people come to Chautauqua to find those people that they can talk to about this stuff. We talked earlier about the incredible diversity of the people who come, but they all have they they all come for this 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 basic shared concept that that we discuss. And frequently, I've I've heard, in fact, maybe almost universally, people say, you know, this is it's so refreshing to be with a group of people who get it, who understand what I'm doing or what I'm trying to do. And again, that's that's a pretty incredible thing when you consider how diverse this group is in every other possible way. People come and they find their community, the shared values that at home with the people surrounding them, it's much more difficult. It's it's They are much more outliers, uh, you know, walking a, what can be a very lonely path. And as Katie and Bryce were talking about earlier, People walk away from Chautauqua with lifelong friendships. And frankly, they walk away sometimes with business that they pull together. In fact, you know, uh, Katie and Alan and are a great example of that for me. They came as attendees and I was looking for somebody to run Chautauqua and, and here we are. That's a brilliant, brilliant connection. But it's not. I'm not the only one, and they're not the only ones who've done that. I think almost everybody who's come to Chautauqua has walked away with at least friendships, if not business connections and cool ideas that come out of it. So that's and that was another thing. Frankly, when I was creating this thing originally, it never occurred to me that that would be the case. You know, I in fact the first Chautauqua it, towards the end of the week, I. I made it a point to walk around and talk to every single person. I could tell at that point they were all having a wonderful time, but I wanted to get a better idea of what exactly it was that put the smiles on their faces. And of course, I was hoping they'd say, oh, JL, it was your talk. 
not one person, not one, <laughs> who <had> said <laughs> that. that. <laughs> well, they all said exactly the same thing, and I mean universally. Every single person said, it's the people I've met here. It's the other attendees. That's, that's, this, that's what's made this magical. I mean, they love the cool venues we went to. They love the good food. They love the tours. They love the one-on-one sessions. They love meeting the bloggers. But the thing that was core to their experience, making it such a magical, magical connection, was the other attendees. By the way, that's been the case in every single Chautauqua. It seems that this is um, like, you know, like, as Jim alluded to, people at home feel like they're outliers. They have to hide what they say. They have to guard their words. Not, you know, especially when it comes to their friends and especially when it comes to their parents who are not, who generally don't understand what their crazy kids are up to. Here in Echitaqua, it allows people to be themselves. And that is a very, very liberating experience. And for a lot of people, that's the first time they ever even felt that that was a possibility. And it doesn't end after you leave, right? It's not like, a, oh, you can do it. And then you go, it's, it's like, you can be yourself for a week and then you get shoved back into the closet, like for the rest of your life. No, 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 no. Like you still have those friends and you still have those lifelong friendships that still let you be yourself. And, you know, that's kind of why we're traveling with these maniacs around <laughs> Portugal and why we've become good friends with every single person on this call, because we all let each other be ourselves. I think the there's the aspect that makes it the friendships really strong, um, even after Chautauqua is over, is the format. The fact that we are limiting it to a small group of 30 people um, per week and the fact that it is the length of it is an entire week makes such a big difference because I have been to many conferences before for work, um, for like FI, and it's never really the aim of Chautauqua just because if you're there for a weekend and you see, you know, like 50 to 100 faces, there's just no way for you to actually get to beyond the surface level of like, how's it going? Why are you here? Where have you traveled to before? You you get deeper um, to the next layer when you actually um, live with these people in the same hotel for a whole week because it just goes much it get, gets to another level and then you become very close to them and you end up having these deep conversations just flourishing in this environment. Yeah. Alan, it seems to me that Chautauqua is unique in so many different ways. Let's start with one of the big ones. How do you choose the location? Why Columbia this year? How do we choose the location? I think we look for, is it a wow? Does it make you go, whoa, whoa? We look for, is it slightly secluded? Because we thought about doing it like in a major city in a place where there's lots of things going on. But then the participants are going to just leave the hotel and hang out around the city and you won't create the same bond and connection. Uh, And then the thing that I added to JL's cool conversations with cool people in cool locations was cool food. Uh, Because that's kind of important to me personally. I like food. Katie and I were in Colombia for two months last year. We were launching the Rebel Business School there and launching all sorts of things in Spanish to help people uh, build businesses without debt. And we fell in love with the place. And the head of Rebel Business School, Colombia, took us for a weekend trip to this place called Via de Leva. And it's just this stunning 16th century colonial town pueblo outside of bogota it's very chilled isn't it really relaxed vibe it's where people from bogota go for the weekend to hang out it's not i mean it's touristy from a a colombian point of view but you don't see many international tourists there. yeah i don't think anyone international goes there it's just incredible and then they had these amazing desserts incredible food (laughs) beautiful (laughs) locations like we just we fell in love with the place and i think like we want to share that with everyone else and share this experience. So we choose the places by, is it going to give us that connection, impact, space? And one of the things we've realized over the years is the impact environment has on connection and ability to think. And I always remember one guy coming up to us at the end of the UK Chautauqua and he said, I've never had a week before where I've had so much space to think. 
And that's because Katie and I have made all the decisions about <laughs> what's going to happen, where to people do, have got to be. He didn't have to do his laundry. He didn't have to think <laughs> about how he's, what he's having for dinner. Like, it just frees people up to be more creative. And he said it was the first time in a couple of years that he's had the space to write and to think, think. and to be more creative. And that's the environment that we love creating for people. Yes. Jail. Many of the participants come from the United States, and these are people who are interested in financial independence. So these are not people who spend money lightly. This is not your bargain conference. Um, why did you guys make that decision? Well, I, I, I think <laughs> there was a decision I made, and I made it from a purely selfish point of view. I wanted to go to cool places, and cool places are not necessarily inexpensive. And you're right. This is Chautauqua is not a bargain uh, vacation. It's not. Uh, it's something that takes a financial commitment. Uh, money, of course, is relative. So, what's a large amount of money for one person is pocket change for another. So, from a financial point of view, Chautauqua is not for everybody. Certainly, somebody at the beginning of their journey, certainly somebody who is still struggling to get out of debt, should not come to Chautauqua. You should be pretty financially comfortable where you can spend what it costs without without too much thought. You you certainly don't want to borrow money to come to Chautauqua. So it's not by design, it's it's not for everybody. And it might not be for some of the people listening to us now this year, but in a few years, it will be something that they want to participate. And again, we only have 30 spots in in each Chautauqua. So it's a very, very small, small group. And there is far more demand for it than than we have capability to to meet. So um, from our point of view, there there are plenty of people for whom this is this is reasonable and affordable and even frankly cheap. And uh, and so that's the market that we've chosen to cater to. Christy, one of the parts of the experience is hearing all the talks, which come from you all, of course, as well as a guest speaker each week. Tell us about the two amazing, incredible guest speakers you guys have picked for this year's <laughs> Chautauqua. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I don't know. <laughs> amazing and incredible. Well, first of all, they're very humble. So we all know that for sure. Humility is a yes. big part of their RR yes, selection criteria. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the main reason why we selected them. I'm super excited to have you, Doc G. Jordan, um, as well as Ken from The Humble Penny with us uh, as speakers this year. And um, I love your stories. I love the fact that you are a hospice doctor. And then you can give us your perspective on what it is like for someone, you know, who's at the end of their life. Like, what is it that... Um, what is the meaning of life? Like, what is your perspective from that that angle? We we would all really, really like to know. And um, I'm really excited to have Ken as well from the Humble Penny. He has an, a super interesting story about how he immigrated from Nigeria to the UK when he was just 14 years old and having reached financial independence at 34 with two kids. So to all the haters out there, you saying that you can't become financially independent if you have kids, that it's just, you know, just us people traveling the world with no responsibilities. He has shown us that it is possible family fire. So I'm super excited to have both of you enlighten us with your um, perspectives and your life stories and uh, sharing all of, sharing with all of us your perspectives on FI. I'm definitely excited. And I know so is Ken from Humble Penny. Katie, tell us a little bit about how the week is organized. So if you're interested in Chautauqua, you want to know what you're going to be doing just during this week. Tell us about the schedule. Each speaker has a talk. So the talk's normally about, we allow kind of two hours for that, but the speaker's not speaking nonstop for two hours. They'll speak for maybe 45 minutes and then leave space for the chat that comes from that and people get so engaged and excited by what's been said and it sparks thoughts and ideas and it leads to this wonderful conversation uh the talks tend to be in the morning so that will sort of go into lunchtime and then we have a couple of outings from the hotel and tours and things to see the local area because people have come all this way they want to see some of the country and some of the town where we'll be staying but we leave lots and lots of space for people to talk to each other 
we fought all these wonderful people together. We want to leave plenty of space in the schedule to allow that, that we've talked about that environment where people talk to each other. Um, we have every meal together and that's where a lot of the conversations come to life where people can talk to each other and enjoy this wonderful food that Alan's excited about. Um, what else would you add, Alan? And I think there's some facilitated sessions to get the conversation going. We help guide people through things and it really does bring people together. I think the thing that always amazes me is I remember one particular gentleman who came to the Chautauqua, his name was Jason. I fell in love with him immediately, but he came in saying, I'm an introvert. I don't know if I can talk to people and then didn't shut up for the entire week. <laughs> that happens so many times. But like, yeah. I never talk to people. I'm really shy. And it just brings out in this context, in this environment, it brings them out of themselves. feels so, like a very safe space, right? Yeah, it's a very safe space to chat. And I, I always like to say people who think they're introverted just haven't met the people to be extroverted around yet. And it's really interesting when you meet the people that are like you and you connect. Uh, it's a different world. And you've got space to go off and recharge in your room, walk around the beautiful hills of Via de Leva. There's plenty of space and time to recuperate and recharge as well as connect with people. And then, of course, while all that's happening, they're the one-on-one -on -one sessions. So we speakers are extraordinarily busy during the week because, you know, we, we have a schedule of folks who are spending, spending individual time with us. And that, for me, is one of the highlights. One of my favorite things is, is to engage in is the one-on-one -on -one conversations that we have. And Katie mentioned this a little bit earlier in terms of of your experience as attendees at Chautauqua and you, you did your one-on-one -on -one with, with the slideshow and charts and graphs and everything. And we went over your finances and that's kind of typical for what people do with one-on-one -on -one sessions, at least with me, but it's not exclusively that and people it's, it's the attendees time. So whatever somebody wants to talk about in their one-on-one -on -one session with me is fine. And I've had people say, you know what, I've read your book. I've read your blog. I'm on the path. I understand all this stuff. I just wanted to sit down and chat for an hour. <laughs> and that's, that's cool too. And the important thing to remember is that anything and everything said in a one-on-one -on -one session is completely confidential. And that's of course what makes it magical and allows people to open up. A lot of our one-on-ones uh, happen in the sauna really messes up our laptops though. So <laughs> <laughs> We are talking with JL Collins, Katie and Alan Donegan, and Christy and Bryce from Millennial Revolution. We are discussing all things Chautauqua. Week one is from September 3rd to September 10th, and week two is from September 10th to September 17th. They take place outside of Bogota, Colombia this year. We're going to take a short break. I'm Doc G, and this is the Earn and Invest podcast. Hey, everybody. I just wanted to remind you that if you're enjoying the Earn and Invest podcast, there are a few other ways in which you can interact with our community. The first is our Facebook group. This is the place where we discuss all our episodes of personal finance, today's headlines. Just go to earnandinvest.com slash Facebook. Again, that's earnandinvest.com slash Facebook. While you're there, you can also go to earnandinvest.com. That is my website where you can find all of our old episodes, some blog posts, as well as video content. We'd love to see you there. You can join our newsletter. Also, my new website, jordangrummet.com, that's J-O-R-D-A-N-G-R-U-M-E-T.com, is now live. And there you can go to find out everything about the book launch, which is scheduled for August 2022. My book, Taking Stock, is about the confluence of my knowledge as a personal finance podcaster as well as end of life as a hospice doctor. I talk about the stories, what I've learned from taking care of people as they've near death and what that has taught them about money and happiness. Check us out at any of these places, and I'd love to see you become part of our community. Now back to the show. Let me reintroduce you. We are talking to JL Collins, 
Katie and Alan Donegan and Christy and Bryce, and we are discussing Chautauqua, which is coming up in September this year outside of Bogota, Colombia. JL, talk to us about some of the projects, adventures, businesses that have been spurred on by participants in Chautauqua as a result of being there. Uh, I I can tell you from my own perspective that, and I've already touched on this in, in our earlier conversation, the Chautauqua team that is sitting here today, which of course is Alan and Katie and Christy and Bryce, came directly out of Chautauqua. Um, they were attendees at Chautauqua. They showed a particular enthusiasm and affinity for it. They had particular skill sets. When Alan and Katie came and and uh, as the week progressed, it suddenly occurred to me that that I had found the people, potentially I'd found the people who, who could run Chautauqua for me uh, in Europe, which is where we initially went. As Alan was getting on the bus to go to the airport at the very end, I pulled him aside and I, I said, Alan, I, I want to just put a little bug in your ear. You don't have to answer me now. Just kind of think about it. But I'm wondering if you and Katie would be interested in in doing the logistics of putting on a, a Chautauqua in Europe. And Alan being Alan put his hand on my shoulder. He looked me in the eye and he said, JL, we're going to do it. And he turned around and he walked onto the bus. And nine months later, I was doing a Chautauqua in the UK. So that's the, the kind of magic that uh, comes out of Chautauqua. Alan and Katie, I'm going to ask you as participants, and then I'm going to ask Christy and Bryce the same question, but as organizers, how has Chautauqua changed you? Now, again, Alan and Katie, I'm asking you as you were as participants. (laughs) I think the first thing that comes to mind is when we arrived, we had a huge amount of cash and were nervous of investing it because like, what about the currency exchange? And what if this person gets into power? And what if this market does this? And we were nervous. For context, this was 2016, but there was a lot going on that year. There was a lot going on that year and we were super nervous and it completely changed our level of confidence. And we asked the same question of everyone who spoke there. They all gave us the same answer and we invested the entire amount the next day. And it completely changed our confidence, our belief, our levels. It The opportunities that came from it, uh, running a workshop in Longmont, uh connecting with JL and working with Chautauqua, like the people and the connection, like our life go choosing to go to that one event has changed our life dramatically. And I always like repeating the quote, you will be the same person tomorrow as you are today, except for the people you meet, the books you read, and the courses you go on. And this one like had such an impact on us. Christine Brace, I'd ask you the same question, but now as organizers, how has Chautauqua changed your lives? Okay. So when you go as an attendee, you don't really see what's happening in the background, like how much work it takes to run the event. So like (laughs) now that we're seeing it from the other side and seeing like how much work Alan Katie put into the event, I really understood why it's life-changing for the attendees because they really do take care of all the logistics so that you don't have to think about cooking. You don't have to think about like on vacation, you don't have to think about how to get to the hotel. And that really does facilitate the deeper connection between people. Like initially when you meet them, they're so introverted. And then um, at the end of the week, they're a completely different person. Like they found their tribe and they tell you things that are really, really Um, Like, I'm honored to hear these things from them because they're like, I've never told anyone this before. I've never even told my own family this before. And then they're telling us and we've only known them for a week. So it's been incredible just seeing from behind the scenes how much work is put into Chautauqua and why that changes um, the lives of the attendees, because that takes away the, the, the overhead of having to plan meals, having to figure out where to go on vacation. And for me, the, uh, the impact, like I started going into this whole blogging stuff because I wanted to, I wanted to help people. I wanted to change their lives. But when you do it over a blog or you do it to a lesser extent, a podcast, uh, you kind of put information out there and then you have no idea whether any of it did anything. Right. I mean, like sometimes I'll I'll answer an email, I'll write a post, and then I just never hear from the people again. But when you are at a Chautauqua, it's 
and it really is face to face. Like you can feel there, you can see the impact in their eyes. You can see the impact in like the the uh, you know they have, they have more energy in their step the next day. And then you like check in with them like a week later, and they're like, oh, by the way, I moved to Brazil, and we're like, okay, that was I, like, I was not expecting that at all. Right. Like there was one guy that came to Chautauqua. He was from Texas and he had only ever ate, eaten hamburgers and fries. Cheeseburgers was a level of his, um, uh, I guess, adventurousness. And then like a, a year later, he was in Japan eating like uh, eating like sushi and like Thailand. And he was in yeah. Thailand and like mm-hmm. doing all this kind of stuff. And we're like, whoa, where, when did that happen? Because people see people see what our life is like and they see the possibilities of what fire can bring you because fire in its own on its own, it really is just like a very, it's kind of like a spreadsheet game, right? Very cerebral monetary problem. It's a math problem at the end of the day. The FI part of it is a math problem to solve, but the RE stuff, the retired, the what you do and what your life looks like after you retire, there's so many different possibilities out there. Some pe- and, and, and what I love doing is just opening their eyes out to those possibilities. Some, some people go out and do, they go volunteering, they go traveling. Some of them become fully nomadic like us. Some people go off and I know, I know one person that went into like, uh, was it Kenya and then started to, and volunteered on um, like a, like a nature reserve and like to take care of elephants or something like that. You know, something that, that they've always wanted to do. Oh, conservancy. Oh yeah. yeah a, a conservatory. Mm-hmm. Uh, something that they've always wanted to do. And what they realize when they meet people like us, it's like, yeah, yeah, you can actually do it. And there are people that will help you. And there are people that it's not as crazy as you think it is. And I know that because we like, we do stuff like that. Something that's really oddly popular is people come to see our backpacks. That's a little, I, I always find that a little weird, but they love seeing the backpacks that we have because we travel around the world with like one backpack and that's it. And then they open the thing up and then they open up our backpack and they're like, that's all you need. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and I always remember there was one particular lady that experienced this whole event. And then her thought was her decision, like my goal is I want a brand new dining room table and I want to have dinner with my kids every night. That sure. was her realization. And I think what we all think about is do what makes you happy, what makes right. you feel good. That's the whole game. And you do yes. not have to live like us. You have to work out what your version of happiness is. And that it, it really is a disconcerting mind shift because like like life 1.0, you're just working for money and you're trying to get to this finish line, which is again, monetary-based math problem. But when you remove money as your primary motivating factor, it's scary for a lot of people because they're, they've gone through their adult lives not knowing what the right thing to do is if you can't put a dollar sign in front of it. then And then you kind of have to start thinking, what is it that you want to do? Not what does your bank account want to do? What does your mom want you to do? What does society want you to do? What does the Democratic Party want you to do? Like, no, no, what is it that makes you happy? Because at the end of the day, on um, like when you, you know, as 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 Doc G will be able to talk about uh on, on his, I'm sure, brilliant talk. Um, on when you're on your deathbed, who like none of that stuff actually matters. It's the time that you spend making yourself happy, doing the things that you love, spending it with people that you love, like that's the thing that really makes it worthwhile. And and that's the first part. The first time I think that people even start thinking about it. JL, this is 2022. You've been doing this, I think, for about 10 years now. Tell us how Chautauqua has changed and evolved over the years. Well, you know, in 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 a profound way, it it really hasn't. The the basic structure of Chautauqua is the same as the very first one, which was in 2013. And that is a small group of people uh, that we whisk off to a a cool exotic location that, as Alan mentioned, is somewhat remote. So we have an opportunity to focus on each other and and bond together. We take people out and show them a little bit of of the country that we're in because we're in a cool place in a cool country. As Alan said, one of the things he added to uh, to the mix is cool food. So the food is is outstanding under uh, Alan and Katie's uh, uh, management, and we have incredibly cool conversations. That's that's been the core of Chautauqua ever since. And the kind of people who show up at Chautauqua, the diversity I talked about earlier, that surprised me with the first Chautauqua in a very pleasant way has continued uh without fail uh and that's always for me personally one of the highlights is i get to meet an incredibly uh, diverse 
group of people from all over the world, all walks of life, uh, all different kind of viewpoints that are all centered around this same thing. So the major change is that uh, we now take it to different places. It used to only be in, in Ecuador when I first started it. But with Alan and Katie, we took it initially to Europe. Now we're going back to South America. We do have a couple of favorite spots that we like to return to. But we also, and this is sort of selfish on my part, we like to, we like to go to new places ourselves. We like to have new, different experiences. One of the things that came up when you were asking uh, Alan and Katie, why Colombia? And they mentioned, well, they were had the occasion to be spending a lot of time in Colombia uh, last year and this year, and they got to know the country pretty well, and, and they found a really cool place. And we, I don't think we've ever held Chautauqua since uh, Alan and Katie took over running it without part of the team, whether it's Alan and Katie, myself, or Christy and Bryce, actually going to the venue that we use and, and spending time there. So we're very careful about choosing the venue. So those are the kinds of things that are different. I mean, probably the single biggest difference is that we go to different places every year now. But the basic Chautauqua formula, uh, amazingly, is is the same for 2022 as it was for 2013. Alan, I have two questions for you. One is, who are the type of people, let's say you're listening to this right now, trying to decide whether you want to sign up for this or not. Who are the type of people who thrive at Chautauqua? That's question one. And the second question is, let's say you're not a big financial independence person. Can you still get something out of this conference? First off, number one, if you're in debt, do not come. Number two, if you're thinking, should I come? And you're just, you're into financial independence. You want to learn, you want to grow, you want to meet people. Maybe you're isolated at home. There's so many reasons you should come and just experience it. And actually, I don't really care. Like, this will sound bad, but I don't really care whether you come to our event or you go to another one. I care that you like connect with FI people, you find your tribe, you lead a happy life. And courses, events, they have the power to change your life. So if you're thinking about it, and you've got this feeling of maybe I should do it, I would say do it do it and experience it and it will just create a change. Do you have to be interested in financial independence to get something out of this conference? Like it helps. <laughs> it helps because you're coming along to meet all these people and talk about it. It helps. And if you knew nothing about it, we did have someone who came that knew really nothing well, about it. I think this is a good opportunity to talk about people who bring their sometimes reluctant partners along oh sometimes reluctant uh, we always get the drag along reluctant partners there's one person who's so passionate about financial independent and then uh there's one guy who i have to mention him he came with his wife and he sat at the back for two or three days looking skeptical <laughs> arms yes. crossed like he thought we were he, he thought we were a cult he did and we are <laughs> to be fair he's got a point <laughs> He's, it, it's, I, I don't blame him. Like when the branding irons came out, that was a little bit much. Yes, esteemed uh, leader. Uh, it's not a cult. It's not a cult. There's no branding irons. <laughs> he was skeptical for probably two or three days, and he didn't really know about financial independence that much other than what his partner had told him. And it means something completely different when you're reluctant partner hears it from someone else than you and they get to see people who've done it and experience it and like so if you've got someone you've struggled to engage this might be the opportunity to bring them along and meet different people and connect at a completely different level and we have had people like they'll they will look at you during the talk and go what is vtsax and you'll <laughs> But that alone opens up a whole different conversation that you've never been able to have because they're asking you about it rather than you're telling them about it. You know, I, I remember clearly the guy that you're talking about. <laughs> and I love him. <laughs> I love that guy. I remember him, you know, with his arms folded in the back of the room. But the rest of the story is after a couple of days, he uh, and when he realized what was actually happening at Chautauqua, what it was actually about, he warmed considerably and he's 
uh, one of the more active alumni uh, yeah. that that we have. And I think a lot of the what we affectionately call dragged along spouses wind up having a great time. I think they come fearing that it's going to be a week of pouring over spreadsheets and and that kind of stuff. And some of that happens in one on one sessions, but you know they find that it's a week. Of, of great fun with in, some incredible people from all walks of life and all over the world and, and the friendship. So I don't think we've had a single dragged along spouse. Uh, we've had many who, who, who came reluctantly. I don't think we've had a single one who at the end of the week wasn't thrilled that they had, that they had made the, the trip. I'd argue that the biggest transformations front to back are the drag along spouses because those are the ones that are just kind of like, I don't know how money works. And then at the end, there was like, there was one uh, that I did a one on one for. She was, there was like, I think she was divorced and her ex husband like seemed to control um, like, like where all of her money was. So she had no idea whether any of her accounts were. And then we sat down and actually tracked down all the stuff that she was entitled to. And then we realized that when we stacked it all up, it was like, it was more than enough for her to be FI on her own. And she had no idea. I was, and at the end of it, I was like, you were in the Navy for 25 years. And she's like, oh yeah, that happened. And I'm like, you forgot you were in the Navy for 25 years. And she's like, oh, that's what that pension was for. And I was like, oh, key dokey. So it's like, <laughs> So she went from what, like day one going like, I don't know if I can afford a burger to at the, at the end of the day be, I'm rich, biatch. <laughs> you know, uh, a few years ago, there was, there was a woman who, had, who attended Chautauqua and she just didn't seem to connect. She didn't seem to connect with the other attendees. She didn't seem to connect with the subject matter. Uh, you know, I, I made a personal effort to engage with her with, with a little bit of success, but not as much as, as most people candidly. And, and I, I was, I was really feeling bad about it because I was thinking, you know, this is, this is a person for whom Chautauqua doesn't appear to be working. And that was a first in my experience, as they say, I mean, everybody else who'd ever come to a Chautauqua, you know, just, it was a, wonderful life-changing experience for them but for this woman it just didn't appear to be and i felt that way at the end of the week when she left and i you know there there seemed that the efforts i made didn't seem to to help and and the other thing that was gratifying to see by the way is the other attendees recognized that she was sort of the odd one out and without any prompting from us they they made an effort to and to in, engage her uh, so anyway, it just didn't seem to work for this woman. I felt bad about that, but you know, it's. I figured, well, you know, it's not going to work for everybody every time. And uh, a couple of months later, uh, I get an email from her uh, announcing that she has a blog, which I didn't know, and that she'd written a post about Chautauqua, and she sent me a link to it. And I was, I looked at this and I was dreading it because I thought this, <laughs> this is, this is going to be, this is going to be terrible. And I almost didn't read it. You know, I almost thought there's no, you know, I, there's no point in reading this thing because it's, it's just going to, just going to depress me. But then I thought, well, you know, this is my event and I, I really should read what, what this woman has to say. And I open up and I start reading. And she talks about how it was the most wonderful week of her life. And I'm reading, and I'm absolutely stunned. I, I mean, again, I didn't think it worked for her at all. And reading her post, it was the single best week of her life. And I still don't quite understand that, but obviously it was incredibly gratifying. So yeah, everybody experiences it a little bit differently. And I guess she was just very much I, i'm not a psychologist but maybe very much the introvert that didn't show the positive feelings that she was having the way that most people at chautauqua do and i think the thing that i've noticed over the years is you never really know the impact of your kind and caring comments yes like you might never know and you just even if you don't get anything back, you just need to keep giving kindness and caring. And the impact is unbelievable. And she talked very specifically about the other attendees and how inclusive they'd been and how kind they'd been. And And I think this was a woman who's had a pretty tough life. And uh, it was a interesting experience and ultimately a gratifying one, but 
man, when I opened that, <laughs> when I when I clicked on the link for that blog post, I, I was not expecting what I read. Well, I wanted to thank you guys all for coming on today to talk about Chautauqua. Me personally, I am humbled that you asked me to come and be a speaker. And the reason why is that change is hard. And one thing I've realized is that we often feel that if we just had enough money, if we just figured out the wealth portion of our life, then all of a sudden everything would change. And what I learned back in 2018 and what I think you all provide at Chautauqua is a place where once we get to that space where we no longer have to think about the money as a limiting factor we then can start focusing on our lives. And to do that, you need to be amongst a community of people who connect with you and share with you and help you take some of those really difficult steps. Katie, first and foremost, let's get the details out. We are recording this on February 7th, but it will air on February 10th, which is a Thursday. How can people sign up for Chautauqua if they are interested? Where should they go? The website to go to is fichautauqua.com forward slash book. Usual spelling of Chautauqua. Yeah, the usual spelling, which has uh, <laughs> taken me nearly five years to, to get it down. There's lots of A's in use. Yeah. And they have to be in the right order. Yeah, yeah you can Google it. It will show up. It'll, it'll come up. Yeah, fichautauqua.com and you can find it there and all the details, everything you need to know. And if you have any questions, shoot us a message through that. And is there a YouTube live tonight on Thursday? Yes, there is. We have a YouTube live with JL and Christian Bryce where we're going to answer your questions about Chautauqua, answer your questions about whatever it is you want to ask us. Yes, we're going live because we know sometimes it's a big decision to come on one of these things. So we wanted to make sure we answered all your questions and connected. And some of you will have lots of questions about finance and money as well. So it's not just about Chautauqua. It's about financial independence and life. So come ask us questions and connect with us. It'll be a blast. Yeah. And you can ask whatever you want to ask. Find Alan Donegan's YouTube channel. The link will be in the show notes. This has been the Earn and Invest podcast. On behalf of myself, Doc G, I'd like to thank Alan and Katie Donegan, Christy and Bryce, as well as JL Collins. That's a wrap. Cool. All right. I got all I need. Anything else you guys want? Need? I think we should... that, Jim, was that okay? Yeah. yeah. I, I think we should say that Doc's coming to week one and Ken's coming to week two, just so that oh, they don't think that they're both coming to both weeks. Okay. And I can, um, if you want, I can do that in the, I'm trying to think, I can do that in the intro or I can do that in the outro too. Or or also, I mean, if, if somebody's interested specifically in either one of you, they can look up what week you're in, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's just it's more important just to that they know a little bit of who you are and who Ken is. All right. I think we got what we need. Sweet. Sweet. Thank you guys for doing this. Um, this, this was this, a blast. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I think it's going to turn out really well, as always, because with you guys are, are so good at saying exactly what you mean. So we'll get well, it down and get it, get it out. I think like most people, I can't, I can't really tell how i'm doing when i'm speaking but listening to the to everybody else it sounded great to me yeah, yeah. I, I think it sounds great and i will get you so i'm going to edit it today tomorrow i should have a clean copy for you to listen to by tomorrow afternoon okay. i'll send it to you guys so if you want to you can listen to it early and then it'll drop on thursday morning great cool and great. all of our posts are dropping uh thursday morning and then yep. when's the live again thursday thursday well, uh it's 10 o'clock for us yeah 5 p.m. Central like Time. Like evening, afternoon. So uh, while the live Friday. is happening, will the tickets be on sale? They'll yes. already be on sale. Yes. yes. They'll already be on sale. Can you put your phone so next to the speaker so it goes ching ching whenever everyone says it? <laughs> so, you know, to get, to get some panic going, some panic Facial line. proof. And, and even if you don't sell it, rig your phone so it says ching ching randomly so it gets people to just go, holy shit, someone just... <laughs>